last year, in May of 2022, I got a new touring bike. Since then, I've ridden a few thousand miles on it, and I've done a handful of tours, and it's been ridden across various different types of terrain, and in different types of weather. In this video, I'm going to share my experiences with my ownership of this new bike. So, full disclosure, I had an unexpected problem with the rear hub that, at this point in time, has really clouded my perception of my new bike. Let me explain that part to you, and then I'll go over some of my likes and dislikes of this beautiful green Comotion Americano. I was on the second to last day of a tour in the mountains of Utah when I noticed a steady clicking sound emanating from the rear wheel. We had been riding some gravel roads, and I assumed the clicking was from a pebble stuck in the tire tread, perhaps. That evening, I looked closely at the rear tire and did not see anything stuck in the tread, and everything looked okay visually. I finished the tour without incident and returned home a few days later. On some local rides the following week, the clicking sound continued, and it seemed a bit louder. My Americano came equipped with Industry 9 Hydra hubs, which are built for mountain biking and seem to be very robust. After viewing some Industry 9 maintenance videos on YouTube, I decided to dig deeper. So I removed the rear wheel from the bike and then removed the free hub. I spun the bearing in the free hub with my finger and it seemed rough and more than just a little. The main hub bearing seemed okay though, as I did not detect any roughness when turning the axle. At this point, I sent an email to Industry 9 customer support, explaining my situation, and they soon sent me a new free hub. I installed the new free hub, but unfortunately the clicking persisted. I then updated Industry 9, and they recommended that I ship the entire wheel to them. So, as directed, I shipped the wheel FedEx to North Carolina. Industry 9 then rebuilt the hub with a new drive ring, axle, bearings, and free hub. All under warranty, of course. They shipped it back to me, and a few weeks later, I'm happy to say that I'm back to rolling silently. All is good in the universe again. So the question is, why would the rear hub fail so soon? Industry 9 replied to my inquiry, and they stated that their Hydra Hub should have no problem with a loaded touring bike that's using a Gates belt drive and a pinion gearbox. I did a little bit of web wandering and did find some information that a over-tensioned belt could put some extra stress on wheel bearings and cause a premature failure. So I then downloaded the Gates app or the Gates belt drive application onto my iPhone and that can actually measure the tension on the belt by listening to the frequency generated when you pluck the belt, sort of like plucking a guitar string. Their recommended setting for pinion is 35 to 50 hertz, and my bike measured 80 hertz, which means it's a higher frequency, 80 being higher than 50, and the belt was a little too tight. So I did adjust the belt, down to 50 and it's a very minuscule adjustment and in my mind I can't see the difference is enough to cause a bearing to, to fail like that especially these hubs are very sturdy robust build so I, I don't see that really being the problem at this point I'm going to just speculate and think that I had a bearing that had some quality issues and perhaps a slightly high tension on the belt exasperated that issue. So I'll find out. Hopefully I'll go another 2,000 miles and won't have any problems and that'll go a long way to alleviate my concerns here. Okay now that I've got that ugly rear hub story out of the way let me tell you how much I really enjoy riding this bike. The drivetrain is super smooth with a plethora of gears to tackle almost any climb. The even increments between gears in the 18-speed pinion gearbox really makes for efficient riding. It's always easy to find the right gear to retain a consistent cadence. For climbing, it's been a mountain goat, 
with the 17 inch low gear. A huge plus is with all the gears and moving parts sealed inside the pinion's gearbox chassis, there's no maintenance, except for a simple oil change once a year. The Gates belt has also been a pleasure. It runs near silent and with no need to clean and lube and no more getting a greasy chain tattoo on the calf of my leg or clothing. The belt has made some minor squeaking noise after riding in dusty conditions, but rubbing a little soap on the belt seems to reduce the occurrence of belt noise. The bike handles very nice too. Compared to my Navarro Randoni, the steering is much more planted and stays true to course when I look over my shoulder or fumble for my GoPro. The cornering is much more linear too. My older Randoni tends to want to suck you further into the turn while the Americano is much more obedient. The bike came equipped with the Salsa Cowbell handlebars, which I find are a big upgrade from the FSA bars on my older bike. The cowbells are wider and the drops flare out just a little bit more and they are super comfortable. Consequently, I find I use the drops a bit more on this bike. The design of the custom frame fits my tall body perfectly. The geometry is dialed in and very comfortable. The tall head tube is a bit of a head turner and I've had some weird looks from some roadies and other riders I've encountered, but it's ideal for my tall body and a more upright riding preference. The addition of a kickstand has been huge, more so than I would have imagined. In the past, I always found a place to lean my bike, or rather, I waited to take a break until there was a place to lean my bike. Now I can stop anywhere, and when you're taking pictures or video, this is a big help. It's funny, since I was about 13 years old, I thought kickstands were uncool and an unnecessary extra weight. What was I thinking? Beyond my disappointment with the rear hub, here are a few dislikes that I've found. This bike is heavy, 36 pounds with racks and cages. That's three pounds heavier than my Randonee. It's definitely a heavy weight. Most of the extra weight is from the pinion, but when fully loaded, the difference is really not noticeable. Although three water bottle cages are somewhat the standard for touring bike frames, there's no third water bottle cage on the Comotion bikes equipped with a pinion gearbox. Apparently the pinion reduces the available space on the bottom side of the down tube and there's just not enough room for the mounts. However, I've been using a Blackburn outpost cage located on the top side of the down tube and it can hold large bottles with all the space that my tall frame creates. I can carry the same amount of liquid with two cages as I did with three cages. The free hub is loud. It sounds trivial, but it's kind of annoying when it sounds like a swarm of bees is following you. I like to silently coast and enjoy the sounds of nature or the environment around me. Also, when you're traveling with someone, the hub noise can be a bit annoying. So how do I feel about spending a large chunk of change on this bike, given the reliability issue that now lurks in my mind? Is that hub going to fail again in the middle of nowhere? Is this bike going to be a maintenance nightmare? Well, no. I don't think the clicking sound in the hub was an indication of an imminent catastrophic failure that would leave me stranded. It was definitely a component failing, and that's always concerning, but the wheel was in no danger of a hard fail from all I can tell. By this time next year, I'll probably be over 5,000 miles, and if the hub issue has not reoccurred, I'll be happy. So, no, I don't have any buyer's remorse as such, just some disappointment that my shiny new toy is not truly bulletproof. Knowing what I know now, I'd still make the purchase, although in the 12 months since I placed the order, the price of this bike has gone up another $1,000 and lead times are close to 12 months. That's crazy, it's crazy, 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 crazy.